I never wanted to do medicine just to have, you know, a bunch of assets. It was actually the science and applying it to, could you help people through science? And that's actually why I went to medical school. Growing up as an Adventist, where better place to do that than at, you know, the cutting edge academic hospital, Loma Linda. When I first heard about Baby Faye, I, I knew he was doing the research with uh, cross-species transplantation. Dr. Bailey, I think, he asked me to do it because I was around a lot and he wanted a consistent person that he trusted that would be on call for like a year. And he just didn't want screw-ups because he couldn't afford one. Think about it. How many anesthesiologists can you name on famous operations? You can't. It's part of the team, you know, the support staff. And what I remember, and I, I have the strips up in my office, the EKG is still, and we just didn't know if it would reject right on the table, but it didn't. And good blood pressure, and uh, she lived oh, quite a few days. And so it proved that technically that operation was possible on a neonate. And I think I did the first 17 uh, transplants, real infant heart transplants, human to human. I think it's one of the things that I'm proud of, just that I was asked to be involved. Probably the biggest challenge that hit me in my whole life was in my mid-30s. I was training for the LA Marathon and I was doing hmm, 40 miles a week of running. And I was out running uh, down Beaumont and lo people that run know Beaumont Avenue and out in Timoteo Canyon. And I was running out there on a Friday, close to sundown, running back. And I, I started feeling, I couldn't tell where my feet were pointed. It was bizarre. I was looking, I couldn't feel my legs. and. Um, I stopped on the side of the road and it, it, it uh, pinched myself and I thought, I can't feel my legs. So I got home, it was about two miles from my house and I called the neurologist on call. And what was unusual was that I looked, I was really fit at the time. And so I looked like I was fine, but I felt like I couldn't breathe. For about a year, nobody knew what was wrong with me. And uh, that was probably the biggest, darkest hour of my life where I had little kids and I thought, man, I might die from this. What they put together was something hit my nervous system, probably this anaphylactic reaction to x-ray dye, but it might've been a virus. And it took me three or four years to get back to working full time. And it changed my view of being a patient. And what I learned from that was uh, patients have it really rough, especially if the doctor doesn't know what's wrong with them and they know they're sick. If I would actually accept the fact that they had something strange and try to give it credibility and figure it out rather than put it back on them that, well, this is too difficult, so you must be crazy. Ended up here and the years went by and then 20 years ago was offered to be chair of the department. And that's, then my goal was to put it on the map as far as could I get Loma Linda anesthesia to be up with US, USCLA and Stanford and UCSF and UCSD. And I think we did that. You know, I was never the uh, best player fastest runner or the highest jumper in probably any sport. But I was pretty good at figuring out how to beat the other team. And so a lot of times I would end up being the captain and it's like sports. If you're a good coach, uh, you could be a good department chair or a president of faculty medical group or a CEO of the hospital because you don't have to be the guy that gets the MVP. That should be one of your faculty. And I've that's one thing I've never been bothered by the success of other people in uh, our department or even in the institution. What I wanted to do was just um, give back any way I could to try to help Loma Linda, you know, make it to the next level, which I think it is, is doing, but the work's never done.